Egzamin maturalny z języka angielskiego. Poziom rozszerzony. Usłyszysz dwukrotnie teksty do zadań od pierwszego do trzeciego. Przed wysłuchaniem każdego tekstu usłyszysz dźwięk. W nagraniu przewidziane są przerwy na zapoznanie się z poleceniami oraz treścią zadań sygnalizowane dźwiękiem. Rozwiązuj poszczególne zadania w trakcie słuchania nagrań oraz w czasie przerw po ich wysłuchaniu. Zadanie pierwsze. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. One. Have you heard of Alan Smithy, a film director? From the start of his career in 1969 to his retirement in 2000, he directed dozens of films in practically every genre you can think of. Though his work was of very poor quality, his productivity was truly admirable. But if he was so bad, how did he get to make so many films? Well, the truth is, Alan Smithy never actually existed. Whenever a Hollywood director lost control over a film and no longer wanted to be identified with it, he could have his name taken off the credits. And in such cases, the real name of the director was replaced by the fictitious name Alan Smithy. Even such famous directors as David Lynch took advantage of the opportunity to use the name for one of his films. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Have you heard of Alan Smithy, a film director? From the start of his career in 1969 to his retirement in 2000, he directed dozens of films in practically every genre you can think of. Though his work was of very poor quality, his productivity was truly admirable. But if he was so bad, how did he get to make so many films? Well, the truth is, Alan Smithy never actually existed. Whenever a Hollywood director lost control over a film and no longer wanted to be identified with it, he could have his name taken off the credits. And in such cases, the real name of the director was replaced by the fictitious name Alan Smithy. Even such famous directors as David Lynch took advantage of the opportunity to use the name for one of his films. Two. The temperatures this week are high all over the country. What should we do to cool ourselves down? Let's ask our expert. Hello, everybody. It's easy. Drink some hot tea. Wouldn't a hot drink make you hotter? The nerves in your tongue have receptors that detect heat. So when you drink something hot, they transmit a heat signal to the brain. When the brain gets the message, it's hot in here, it turns on the mechanism we use to cool ourselves down which is sweating. The more we sweat, the better the cooling effect is. That's why a hot drink on a hot day works like a charm. Besides, the billion people in India who drink hot tea every day can't be wrong. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. The temperatures this week are high all over the country. What should we do to cool ourselves down? Let's ask our expert. Hello, everybody. It's easy. Drink some hot tea. Wouldn't a hot drink make you hotter? The nerves in your tongue have receptors that detect heat. So when you drink something hot, they transmit a heat signal to the brain. When the brain gets the message, it's hot in here... It turns on the mechanism we use to cool ourselves down, which is sweating. The more we sweat, the better the cooling effect is. 
That's why a hot drink on a hot day works like a charm. Besides, the billion people in India who drink hot tea every day can't be wrong. Three. Ashley, thanks a lot for your performance. It reminded me of the time when I was standing where you are standing now. It was in a talent show hosted by Tim Gray, and I was harshly criticised. But this criticism motivated me and the other contestants to put more effort into what we were doing. It made us better. And now, as I'm sitting here in a different role, it's my responsibility to tell you that your performance was far from perfect. But despite the flaws, some of them serious, all of us on the panel were impressed with your energy and enthusiasm. So keep up the good work and look for ways to improve. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. Ashley, thanks a lot for your performance. It reminded me of the time when I was standing where you are standing now. It was in a talent show hosted by Tim Gray, and I was harshly criticized. But this criticism motivated me and the other contestants to put more effort into what we were doing. It made us better. And now, as I'm sitting here in a different role, it's my responsibility to tell you that your performance was far from perfect. But despite the flaws, some of them serious, all of us on the panel were impressed with your energy and enthusiasm. So keep up the good work and look for ways to improve. Zadanie drugie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. One. Being an undercover hotel inspector is something I truly enjoy. I always have my story all worked out in advance. But once, when I was sent to review a farmhouse hotel, as soon as I showed up, the receptionist asked me if I had come for the event which was being held in the town. On impulse, I decided not to use the story I'd made up and spontaneously said yes, even though I didn't know what event it was. To my surprise, I was immediately shown to the hotel dining room, where I was seated at a large table with people who had come to take part in the event. It turned out that the event was a farm machinery and agricultural services show, so I had to pretend throughout the evening that I was a potential client. Two. All my working life has revolved around hotels. I studied hospitality management and after graduation worked as a chef and a restaurant manager. Then, one day I spotted an advert for the position of undercover hotel inspector. It sounded perfect. There were a hundred applicants, but my vast experience in the trade landed me the job. I've stayed in mansions and five-star hotels in the world's biggest cities but sometimes I'm sent to test out a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. And while the experience may not be luxurious, 
it does give me an opportunity to enjoy quiet walks in the countryside. Three. My job involves inspecting hotel restaurants. It's not unusual for me to have two starters, two main courses and two desserts, and then call room service for a midnight snack. The food is sometimes horrible, but I have to try it anyway. I don't let anyone know who I am until I pay the bill after breakfast. Then there's usually a kind of nervous energy in the air. But my job is not about giving bad reviews. It's about giving objective feedback and exploring areas where there's room for improvement. Four. A friend of mine is an undercover hotel inspector, and one day he told me his firm was recruiting. I thought, why not? And I applied. I was successful, and now I've been working as a hotel inspector for about three years. At the beginning, I wasn't sure that it was what I really wanted to do, but after some time I changed my mind. My assessment starts the minute I arrive at the hotel. I begin with evaluating the check-in process. In the hotel restaurant, I'll even make a note of how long my water glass sits empty. The evaluation is as much about the staff as it is about the hotel itself. Five. As an undercover hotel inspector, I have to be creative. Staff can sometimes be very inquisitive. They wonder, why has she come all by herself to an expensive resort like this? I always have a good story prepared. I frequently say that my friends just had a baby, so I'm in town visiting. Then, just in case they have any suspicions, I will, for example, ask the receptionist where I can purchase baby clothes. And in this way, I also test the staff's local knowledge, which is part of the hotel assessment. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. One. Being an undercover hotel inspector is something I truly enjoy. I always have my story all worked out in advance, but once, when I was sent to review a farmhouse hotel, as soon as I showed up, the receptionist asked me if I had come for the event which was being held in the town. On impulse, I decided not to use the story I'd made up and spontaneously said yes, even though I didn't know what event it was. To my surprise, I was immediately shown to the hotel dining room, where I was seated at a large table with people who had come to take part in the event. It turned out that the event was a farm machinery and agricultural services show, so I had to pretend throughout the evening that I was a potential client. Two. All my working life has revolved around hotels. I studied hospitality management and after graduation worked as a chef and a restaurant manager. Then, one day I spotted an advert for the position of undercover hotel inspector. It sounded perfect. There were a hundred applicants, but my vast experience in the trade landed me the job. 
I've stayed in mansions and five-star hotels in the world's biggest cities, but sometimes I'm sent to test out a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. And while the experience may not be luxurious, it does give me an opportunity to enjoy quiet walks in the countryside. Three. My job involves inspecting hotel restaurants. It's not unusual for me to have two starters, two main courses and two desserts, and then call room service for a midnight snack. The food is sometimes horrible, but I have to try it anyway. I don't let anyone know who I am until I pay the bill after breakfast. Then there's usually a kind of nervous energy in the air. But my job is not about giving bad reviews. It's about giving objective feedback and exploring areas where there's room for improvement. Four. A friend of mine is an undercover hotel inspector, and one day he told me his firm was recruiting. I thought, why not? And I applied. I was successful, and now I've been working as a hotel inspector for about three years. At the beginning, I wasn't sure that it was what I really wanted to do, but after some time I changed my mind. My assessment starts the minute I arrive at the hotel. I begin with evaluating the check-in process. In the hotel restaurant, I'll even make a note of how long my water glass sits empty. The evaluation is as much about the staff as it is about the hotel itself. Five. As an undercover hotel inspector, I have to be creative. Staff can sometimes be very inquisitive. They wonder, why has she come all by herself to an expensive resort like this? I always have a good story prepared. I frequently say that my friends just had a baby, so I'm in town visiting. Then, just in case they have any suspicions, I will, for example, ask the receptionist where I can purchase baby clothes. And in this way, I also test the staff's local knowledge, which is part of the hotel assessment. Zadanie trzecie. Przeczytaj polecenie i zapoznaj się z treścią zadania. When I was in high school, my parents decided I should finally learn to cook for myself. When they were going out one evening, my dad said, There's a pizza in the fridge. All I had to do was to follow the instructions, which were, pop it in the oven and set the timer. What could go wrong? However strange it may sound, while I was taking the pizza out of the oven, I didn't pay enough attention and it slipped out of my hands. It ended up falling face down onto the flame in the oven and caught fire. I immediately threw some water onto it to put the fire out, so nothing terrible happened, but that incident discouraged me from cooking for years. A decade later, I'm still living in New York. 
a city where the need to cook is basically non-existent, as at the push of a button you can have pizza, sushi, or any other type of food delivered to your doorstep. Still, my strong aversion to cooking became downright embarrassing as time went by. Plus, eating out with a bunch of friends every single night was not doing my finances any favours. So I tried to use apps which give demos of how to make easy meals, but it didn't work out for me. I felt I had to be taught how to cook by someone personally. That's why one of my New Year's resolutions was to enrol in a cooking course. I hoped it would strengthen my determination, and it did. Right at the beginning of January, I did some research into cooking courses available in my neighbourhood and signed up for one. I've been attending the classes for two months now, and I have discovered that I really enjoy making bread and cakes. The precision required for that is something much more relaxing than the improvisation that goes into other kinds of cooking. I only regret that I now have to pay to learn how to cook, although I could have learnt it for free from my dad, if only I'd wanted to. So, am I the next master chef? No. But I still hope I will be able to make a simple meal for my friends one day. Wysłuchaj nagrania jeszcze raz. When I was in high school, my parents decided I should finally learn to cook for myself. When they were going out one evening, my dad said, There's a pizza in the fridge. All I had to do was to follow the instructions, which were, pop it in the oven and set the timer. What could go wrong? However strange it may sound, while I was taking the pizza out of the oven, I didn't pay enough attention and it slipped out of my hands. It ended up falling face down onto the flame in the oven and caught fire. I immediately threw some water onto it to put the fire out, so nothing terrible happened. But that incident discouraged me from cooking for years. A decade later, I'm still living in New York, a city where the need to cook is basically non-existent, as at the push of a button you can have pizza, sushi, or any other type of food delivered to your doorstep. Still, my strong aversion to cooking became downright embarrassing as time went by. Plus, eating out with a bunch of friends every single night was not doing my finances any favours. So I tried to use apps which give demos of how to make easy meals, but it didn't work out for me. I felt I had to be taught how to cook by someone personally. That's why one of my New Year's resolutions was to enrol in a cooking course. I hoped it would strengthen my determination, and it did. Right at the beginning of January, I did some research into cooking courses available in my neighbourhood and signed up for one. I've been attending the classes for two months now, and I have discovered that I really enjoy making bread and cakes. The precision required for that is something much more relaxing than the improvisation that goes into other kinds of cooking. I only regret that I now have to pay to learn how to cook, although I could have learnt it for free from my dad, if only I'd wanted to. So, am I the next master chef? No. But I still hope I will be able to make a simple meal for my friends one day. <laughs> 